Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors, I'm Erica. Today's video is a continuation in our How I Color Alphabet series. Today is letter M and M is for moon. Uh, now I do have a few moons that I have colored um, and actually they are not all in Johanna Basford or Hannah Carlson, which is surprising. Um, so I kind of had to go through and, and find a few of them, but I've got a couple to show you. And then we'll get into um, coloring, how I color the moons and all that stuff. So um, there's a couple different ways to approach it. And um, depending on your image will kind of depend on how you tackle that, that moon. So for example, these little tiny crescent moons, not a whole lot you can do there. I usually just add a little bit of shadow uh, to the outside edge. Sometimes I'll white out the lines. Really with the moons, I, I want to talk a little bit about how I color the moons, but also how I approach the night sky behind it. Um, that's going to kind of be included in this video today. So uh, you can see as you get closer to the moon, your colors get lighter. So, so yeah, so there is one there. I've got um, this one here, which is a little bit different because the whole background was done with Neo Colors. Um, so instead of it getting lighter, it's just all kind of galaxy in the background. And then I just, um, whited out the lines, add a little bit of gray to the moon to make it look more white, <laughs> uh, and, uh, went from there. So there's another little crescent one. I've got one more little crescent one to show you. So it's on this one. This is a sneak peek for my, um, September or October completed pages. Um, but you can see I did that again. This is all done with uh, alcohol markers. And as you get closer to the moon, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And then I also went ahead and added some stickles to my moon as well. So there's that one. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of the full moons. This one is another kind of sneak peek of um, my completed pages. I added in this moon here in the background because it was just a, a blank window. And, um, this one, I just left white, like you don't have to go in and do a whole bunch of detail, but on this one, I just left it white, but again, it was, you know, it's lighter as it approaches. So it looks like the white, the light is shining from the moon. So there's that one. I do have one in Hannah Carl's on, uh, this is one where I went into a little bit more detail on the moon. I think this circle was here. Don't quote me on that for sure. I think that the circle was here, that the moon was here. Uh, but I went in and added some detail. So I'm going to hold it up a little closer so maybe you can see kind of the a few of the like little um, starburst shapes that are, are on there and different um, darker areas. And that if you look at a picture of the moon, it kind of has that um, effect on it when you, when you see it. There's like these scarred marks or... Um, you know, just marks like that. So in general, when I do, when I do add this kind of detail to the moon, it's just kind of random and organic. And I just kind of use a reference and do my best. Um, and then sometimes it turns out and sometimes it doesn't, but, uh, so there is that one. Um, and then I do have another one. I think this is another one. So this is one. Um, again, the background is done with like some kind of watercolor, neo colors, something like that. But uh, you can see on the moon, I've added a little bit of, of color to this one. Instead of it just being solid white, I added a little bit of cream. I'm going to hold it closer so maybe you can see a little bit. There's a little bit of cream and gray in that moon. And um, one of the reasons that I do that is, especially like with fall pictures and stuff, I like to add a little bit of that color just to kind of reflect uh, the overall tone of the, the rest of the page. So, so yeah, so there is that one. And then and this one is another one. So this one, um, this image is highly inspired by the front cover artwork from Molly Harrison. Um, however, the moon in the background, I, I think I found it like a, a galaxy kind of sky um, to, for inspiration on the background. And then the moon, I did kind of, 
um, it was inspired by the moon on the front cover. Mine isn't as orangey and I don't have the clouds going across, but I do have like these fun, um, just the fun colors in this. Like I wouldn't typically use these kind of, I think I've got like eggshell in there maybe from Prisma and, um, cream and sand maybe. And then of course white, uh, and then I whited out the edges, but so yeah, so there, there are all my moons. Um, I have a couple of uh, images I want to color with you guys and a um, couple of different ways that I would approach it. And I'm going to show you all of that. So I will talk to you again here in a second. Okay, sorry, one last one. I This isn't like a moon centric page but I really like this night sky <laughs> and there is a little moon in it so I just wanted to show you guys um a lot of the times the moons aren't going to be the main focus and that's okay too and I typically will just white out the little moon so there's another image in here that I saw a second ago so like here you've got a tiny little moon you don't really have to focus on that but the fun is going to be in the night sky and how you kind of make the light from the moon shine down so you can see on in the the little sheep and the little fence posts they all create like a shadow and the trees all have shadows uh and there's like shadows on the roof from where the light would be coming from the moon so that's always a fun thing to do too okay all right so that's it so I'll, let me let me get situated and i'll talk to you guys here uh again in a second Okay, so the first page we're going to work on is in Sorcerers and Sorceresses. This is a Coloring Heaven special, and I love this book. I have not colored in it nearly as much as I would like to, um, but the artwork is beautiful. It's all by, um, I want to say, Nalecki, Nalecki Shoemaker. I'm sure I butchered that name. I apologize. Um, but I'm going to do the sky back here. I'm going to do that with some alcohol markers. And then we'll talk about a little bit about the moon. But I'm just going to use a few um, alcohol markers, and I'm going to speed color that so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just going to do a color shift from dark at the bottom to a little bit lighter around the moon, um, kind of like you've seen in some of the other uh, pages I showed. So I'm going to get started with that, and I will talk to you guys again in a second. So I've got the background done. I did go over and uh, cleaned up my mess a little bit with the clouds. So I've got some nice smoky bits going across, but you can see there's a nice uh, gradient from white to darker and darker and darker as you move away from the moon. Um, I did mess up a little bit right around in here, so I can just add a little bit of white Posca. I love the Posca on this. Um, coloring heaven paper too it's awesome but you can just kind of add it in there and it kind of covers up all your mistakes <laughs> so for this moon I'm just going to be using um, some cool grays some white and I'm gonna I grabbed my slate gray just in case I want to give it a little bit of a bluer tint um, which I think I probably will but I've just got all of the lighter cool grays so I'm starting with 50 and 
anywhere where the artist has drawn in the um, these lines, I'm going to shade around in there. And there's also like, it's very circular in these parts. So if you kind of shade one side of it, it creates like that circle effect. Now you're not gonna do like shadows overlapping from the hat or the house or anything like that. It's just gonna be the shading that is on the actual moon because it's so far up in the sky, there's no way that those other objects are gonna create a shadow. Now sometimes with the, um, the clouds, there might be a little bit of a shadow, so I might do a little bit of a shadow like that, but yeah. And then the other thing that I like to do is I like to, right around the edge of the moon, you're gonna leave this little this little gap between the line that's drawn and where I'm putting my color. So there's this little white edge. And you don't wanna go all the way around the moon, but you do want to kind of draw attention to it that it's a sphere. Okay, and then, um, so we've got those, those sections drawn in and I'm gonna add in some of those shaded bits. So I'm just going to randomly decide where I want to have these little shadowy parts. And it can be like little islands of shadow, um, parts that are connected and that like peninsula off from the other one. And yeah, so just random little bits here and there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the 30% and kind of color over top of everywhere that I've just colored. You guys have seen me do this a, a few times with um, prismas. You can use those lighter prismas as you go uh, to shade and to blend. And those areas where I have put down the color, I'm just going over top of it. I'm not really going out too far from that, those areas. Okay. All right, next lightest color would be my 20%. The only part that I'm really extending a little bit is the outline around the moon, the around the edge. The rest of it's just kind of getting blended a little bit with the lighter colors. Now I'm using 10% cool gray. You don't have to use all these different grays either. You can always, you know, go in and shade with your, just pick a couple of grays. Um, you could use blues, you can use um, like creams. You know, sometimes you've got, you've got orange moons, so you can do different tones of oranges and yellows. Those are always fun to do. Okay, now I'm gonna use my white and just kind of really get in there and blend everything out. So I'm pushing pretty hard with the white. And I'm just gonna cover everything that I already have down on the paper.
All right, now I'm going to come in with this slate gray. This is a tiny little, tiny little guy, but it will work for what I'm wanting. And I'm just going to add this blue color into just a few places where I want it to be a little bit of a darker shade. I know this is small, so I'm sorry if my fingers are covering up any of the areas that I'm trying to fill in here. And then I'm just going to pick a few spots on these shaded areas that I already put down to add a little bit of that blue color. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with the 30, and I'm going to blend that out a little. All right, and that is pretty much it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and cover up that um, that tree branch because there's a couple of trees in here. But yeah, so there is our first moon. So this is a very cool um, cool gray moon, and I will probably go in and I'll be adding like you know little stars and whatnot. These are just literally random, randomly placed and spaced, and some of them are bigger, and some of them are like those little starburst dudes. You know what I'm talking about, right? Where you kind of flick your marker or your Pasca. Okay, so there is our, our moon number one, and I am going to um, get my stuff ready for moon number two. Okay, the next moon that I want to work on is in Mythographic Dream Garden, and it's this page. And I, um, you could either take that as a moon or a sun, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this as like a moon with the like, you know, you sometimes see those pictures where the moon is setting like over the ocean or something, and it just looks huge. So this is that's kind of my vision for this guy. Um, I'm gonna do again. I'm gonna do the background really quick. Uh, a speed color through that for you guys, and then we will work on the moon. I'm going to be using my um, Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2s. Um, They're the water-soluble uh, crayon, and um, yeah, and I'll just kind of show you how I would do the background with those as well. So I will talk to you guys again here in a second.
Okay, so now I'm going to use Neo Colors again on the moon. And I'm going to use these four colors. So I have gray, light gray, lemon yellow, and white. And um, I don't have like a cream. So this lemon yellow is going to be as close as I can get, but I'm going to combine it with a couple of other colors and hopefully that'll be about what I'm looking for. Um, but for this, this moon, I'm just going to I'm just going to have a little bit of shading and, and that's really it. It's just going to be a tiny little bit. Um, and then I'll probably end up whiting out the, um, the outline of the moon. So for this one, um, I feel like because I'm going to have the moon be like really bright that you won't really be able to see like all the details on the moon, but I, I'm going to add in a little bit of, and I'm using very, very light pressure here. Uh, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of um, shadowy stuffs here and there. And like not, I'm just kind of doing whatever I feel like there. So that's the nice thing about the moon too, because it it's not something that people like sit and stare at, but if it's a, if it's, close <laughs> then people will know yeah that's that's the moon okay so now I'm going to use this very light I'm going to use this lemon yellow color and I'm just super lightly as light as I possibly can um just barely touching the page with it and then I'm going to use the white to make sure that it's nice and light still and I'm just coloring over all of the white or all over everything that I've just colored with the white. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my uh, water brush. And again, this is my Arteza water brush. It's got a push button. I think Derwent makes these two. I can't remember who else, but I love these things. So uh, make sure that I have my cloth here, nice and handy. And I'm just going to spread that out. And you'll see that it just kind of creates um, a little bit of subtlety and shading and it's not like super um, detailed like you know the last one I mean I know the last one wasn't like super detailed but it, you still had very defined areas this one's not going to be anywhere near as defined And that is really it. I mean, this is one is a super easy one to do because you just kind of give a little bit of color to the moon and that's, that's all you got to do. Uh, I might add in actually, so I have this orangish yellow color. I might add a little bit of that because this is looking, it looks, it looks okay but it looks a little, I don't know, a little something. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of this orangish yellow color, I think. Oh, there's a, it looks like the horizon line is off there. I will have to remember to add that back in. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna add in little bits of this. And this is, again, a super light touch, hardly any pressure at all. And I'm going to blend that out. The thing that I like the most about the Neo Colors is that you can go over top and add colors and change the look of things and... Yeah, I think I should have started with that orangish yellow color instead of the This will give me that more of a cream tone that I was looking for. Okay. 
So yeah, so that's basically all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna white out the lines. Let me grab my Posca here. And then in the background, you don't really, the, the clouds can be right up against it. I will um, probably end up coloring them some kind of light, I don't know, maybe a light pink or a light blue, light purple maybe. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this page. I just liked, I liked the moon on this page. So, all right. And that's it really. I mean, I can go back in if I want to and add in some of those, those lines. But like I said, this is supposed to be kind of just a hint of color. Um, so yeah. So right. There is our second moon and that one was done with, um, watercolor medium. So yeah, let's, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next one. Okay, our next moon is going to be in this awesome book by Molly Harrison. This is the Halloween coloring book. I did want to show you some, one fun thing that you could do. This is one that my daughter did quite a while ago. Um, but she added a pattern. She added polka dots to the moon in the background. I thought that was a fun thing to do. Uh, but anyway, we're going to work on this one today. And I'm going to be using some, um, I think they are pronounced Mungu soft pastels, possibly. Uh, but I'm going to be using, I'm going to show you kind of how I would approach using the soft pastels um, to do the background and the moon. I would probably, I probably will go back through and add uh, pencil over top because uh, a lot of the times when you use pastels on this Amazon paper, it doesn't get as dark as you would like. Um, you can get it pretty dark, but it's not, it's not quite, quite there. So uh, let me, I do have to grab a couple of things. So I will be right back with you and we'll get started. Okay, so typically I would be using these round cotton pads. I cannot find what I did with my package of them. So I have to use older ones that I have kept. I also have a paper towel that I can use and some cotton swabs. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I do need one more thing. And I am, I have a, um, craft knife. So I think I'm going to do the background for this one. It's going to be, uh, in shades of like dark blues. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my craft knife. I'm going to add this around the outside edges. So when I do this, you just hold the, um, the chalk and just remember you're going to get messy. <laughs> um, this needs to kind of be flatter. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> so I'm going to go around the outside edge and I'm just going to scrape off a little bit of this blue. Oop, I went over the edge, but that's okay because this stuff erases almost like magic. So I've got that, that blue and then I want like this turquoisey blue color. I'm going to do that pretty much right over top of where I did that last bit. Okay, um, and then I think I'm just going to do like this turquoisey blue color. Yeah, that should be good. And I'm not going to go up to the edge because we're going to try to leave like a ring of lighter color around the moon. Okay, so I've got my blues. And I'm just going to go ahead and start in the lighter area and then work my way out towards the darker color. And just remember that if you do get, you know, over the lines or go over part of the image that this stuff, you can erase this pretty much uh, instantly. So 
super easy to erase. Okay, and then I'm going to continue this around this way because it just needs to be really light, okay? Change my cotton pad a little bit. So now I'm just using the color that's on the pad to just kind of come in and add in areas where I feel like I need a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to use the same cotton pad. I'm going to come back in with my darkest color and I'm going to pick the color up right off of the stick and then just, can you even see? Nope, <laughs> sorry, just rub in where I want it to be a little darker. I'm gonna do that on all the corners because I want it to be a little bit darker in the corners. And the nice thing about these soft pastels is you can go back over, like I said earlier, with pencil. You can go back over and um, darken things up once you put a a layer of fixative, you can use workable fixative spray to spray and hold this pastel in place. And then you can work on top of it, which is really cool. Okay, so what do we think of that? I think I wanna make the edges around here a little bit darker. I'm just gonna take the cotton pad, here we go. Okay, my fingers are very blue. I should probably clean those up. Okay, and then I'll show you how easy it is to clean that up as well. And then we'll do um, a little bit to the moon itself too. So I will be right back with you after I clean up these messy fingers. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to show you really quickly how you can very easily erase this away. Um, I'm just using a Statler plastic eraser and it's almost like magic how this stuff just kind of lifts right off the page. And then typically I will have my brush down here, but I don't know where my brush is at the moment. So I'm gonna use this brush. And you just get rid of, cause you don't wanna smear it back across the page like that. So you just use a, a brush and a very light hand. And uh, that way you won't get your stuff everywhere. So to get into the, like on the objects, you can use um, end of the pencil eraser. You can also use your, um, I, my favorites are my uh, Derwent electric eraser and my Tombow Mono Zero eraser, but these ones work as well. And this is what I have on hand currently. So this is what we will be using just to kind of show you how easy it is. And then, like I said, once you spray this with the workable fixative, the color will be stuck in there and then you can color over top of it with your pencil and it, it works beautifully. So um, let's work on the inside of the moon here. And I am going to, um, I'm gonna make this kind of a, a fun harvest moon maybe. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got my super fancy color chart. I'm gonna use this cream color that's there. Uh, gonna use this yellowy ochre color. I think a little bit of the peach color. And then some of these really light gray tones. I mean, you can't probably hardly see those, but that's what that is. So I'm gonna start with those and see how I like it. And basically what I'm gonna do with this, uh, I'm gonna start by using a Q-tip. So it's similar to what I did where I held the, the 
pastel and used the cotton pad, but now I'm going to use a cotton bud and I'm going to use, I'm going to just rub it on there and then I'm going to kind of map out where I want my color to go. Um, and you don't want to push hard when you go to apply it because then you'll get like these weird random blobs of color. So you can use these guys like this. Um, they make Q-tips that have like a super sharp point. So if you really want to get pastel colors in um, smaller areas, they have those that you can use to get the fine detail work done. Um, one thing that I sometimes forget about is when I'm rubbing, when I'm getting the color, you want to do that off of your page so that you don't transfer color where you don't actually want it. I mean, again, it's easy to take off and edit, you know, your pages, but okay. So let me brush some of that dust away. So you can kind of see how I'm doing that. I'm just gonna go through with all three of those colors and some of that white gray and um, I'm gonna speed that up so you guys can see, but yeah, it's basically just me playing at the moment. So this is the fun part. So I'll talk to you guys again in a second. Okay, so now I'm actually gonna go in and draw a little bit with these pastels. So I'm using a little bit of a darker tone. So this is a little brown. And when you draw with the pastels, you wanna, again, use a really light hand, but the, the area where you first put the color down is definitely going to, um, you're gonna be able to see where you're drawing with it. So you wanna make sure that you're paying, you know, attention to how you're, how much pressure you're using and stuff like that because then when you come in so I'm just going to use a paper towel that I have folded up so I take a rectangle of paper towel fold it in half fold it in half again fold it in half again create this square and then I'm going to create a tinier square like this and then I fold this over and I've kind of made like this pointy edge that I can use to then spread out the color where I want it. It's kind of like a stylus, like a, not, not a stylus, like a blender, like a paper blender. The nice thing about using a paper towel like that is you can do it as many times as you want because it, it's very reusable. Okay, so that added some nice color in there. I'm gonna add a little bit down here. Okay. Um, yeah, I might do this again actually. So I've got that corner and now I'm just gonna fold it around and shift it to a different corner, but I'm gonna add in some of this yellowy color. Just add in like When you have the darker colors, you really don't want to go right onto the paper unless you know that um, you know you want those lines to be visible because they will definitely be visible. But with the lighter colors, you can usually blend them out. All right. See, I just did it with my hand. <laughs> Don't use your hand. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this uh, light gray color. I'm just gonna go over the whole thing. And this is like almost a white
It really does look white, but it's not. And that's basically all this is going to do is just soften everything up. And I'm going to come back in and blend it again with one of these corners. So it doesn't completely cover up what you've done, but it does lighten up. some of the colors that you've put in. So it just makes it a little more subtle. Okay, I'm gonna brush that dust away. Okay, so that is, that is basically, I think, kind of what I would do. I mean, you can always go back in and play. Reference photos, again, are going to be your friend. You can find, you know, pictures of, like, different moons and just go in and just start adding color and, and tone and shading and, you know, all the stuff just to see kind of where you want all of that. It doesn't have to be um, picture perfect because, you know, you're just playing, so... Just remember when you, if you're gonna use um, the pastels right on the paper to use a very light hand so that you can blend things around. All right, so that's it. And you can see a couple places where I've gone over top of her. So I'm just gonna make sure to um, erase anything before I um, add in my, yeah, that stuff. <laughs> My goodness, my spray fixative. So, yeah, I think what I might do is go through and clean this up, uh, and then I'll white out the line of the moon and come back so you guys can see what that looks like finished as well. Okay, so here it is all um, sealed and fun and clean and all the stuff. So I have started to go back over with pencil. And you can see here, I've used a couple of colors on the corner and then I've taken my uh, colorless blender and blended that out. And you can work with both of those mediums over top of your workable fixative, which is awesome. And then in the background on the moon, I've added a few uh, little bits with my uh, color pencil. And basically, again, that's just gonna be barely touching the page. And then I've blended it out with several different colors wherever I wanted that those colors to kind of be. Um, I did want to show you that I am taking my cream color and I'm just going right around along the outside edge of the moon. I'm not touching, I'm leaving a little white space between the black line and where I'm adding the cream, but that's just going to give it a nice, the whole moon, a nice, lovely cream color. And then, you know, the colors that I choose to put on top of this will be, will add to it as well. But yeah, and I'm just trying not to push super hard. I'm just adding a little bit of color around the outside edge with that cream color. Okay, and then I will also take my, oh, you know what? Maybe instead of using, no, I'm going to use the white. I'm going to say instead of using white, I could use like the cream or I think it's called ivory Posca, but white will work just as fine. So I'm just going to white out the line all the way around. And I don't have to be super careful because there's no white on either side of it. So I just want to make sure that I cover up the, the whole black line. But if I go off a little bit in either direction, that, that's not a big deal. Let me get the rest of this guy all cleaned up. Then hopefully this page and the first page will be finished uh, in October. I think that other, that second one that I did, um, that one can be finished anytime. But these ones are very much, very seasonal. 
but not all of the like full moon images that you you have are so these ones just happen to be ones that I wanted to work on anyway okay just need to get the rest of this little bit of moon done all right and then you know with the Posca if you if it's not as opaque as you like that you can always go over especially once it dries you can go back over with another layer and it will um, cover itself up okay so there's my moon I think that's gonna look pretty cool once I get all of the corners darkened up and it's just gonna have that focal point be right in the center of the thing so yeah I think that was basically it so we did this lovely moon here we worked on this lovely moon and then we did this guy, which I've done a little bit more since <laughs> the other day when I recorded this. So there's just a few more things colored on this page now. Um, but yeah, I think all of them are really cool. And I hope that those, some of those tips and tricks, um, or that you learned some tips and tricks, that I shared something with you that maybe you weren't aware of or didn't already have in your arsenal to attack those pages. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me today. The next letter is N and N is for nose and that one should be a fun one to do too. So uh, yeah, that's it. Have a great day. Thanks so much for joining me and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.